Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Entrepreneurship Matters. We are in for an electrifying uh, Entrepreneurship Matters today, uh, where we are featuring two amazing entrepreneurs, or entrepreneurs in the energy space. Um, my name is Alicia Wilson, I'm Vice President for Economic Development for Johns Hopkins University and Johns Hopkins Health System. And this is a conversation that we've been having for 30 weeks with uh, entrepreneurs across our city and our region. Really, we were spurred and inspired by a young person, Camry Moses, who came up with the concept of entrepreneurship where it matters, where we um, tell the story of entrepreneurship, the struggles, as well as the successes through the, um, through the lens of entrepreneurs. And today is no different. What we know is that it takes undiluted passion, multiple failures, grit, and a long-term commitment to have it happen. And we have two entrepreneurs who are doing just that here today. I'd like to introduce you to Crystal Hansley, as well as Jason Swartzberg. Um, let me read their bios, and then we are going to jump right into the conversation. They're coming on screen in just one moment, but I'm going to introduce them um, right now. Crystal Hansley is the founder and chief executive officer of We Solar. Uh, as CEO, Crystal brings affordable and accessible community solar energy to under-resourced communities in Baltimore and assists commercial properties with energy efficiency. Before founding We Solar, Crystal was director of government and community relations for Neighborhood Sun, a leading community solar energy enterprise in Maryland. She's helped thousands of low to moderate income families save hundreds annually on their electrical bills. And she has been um, really at this for a long time serving her community. She is a former community affairs liaison for United States Representative Eleanor Holmes Norton and former program manager for the Senate Democratic Diversity Initiative at the Office of the Majority Leader, Harry Reid. Um, she is a native of Brooklyn, but she has embraced Baltimore with both arms, and we're so happy to have her today uh, with us. Thank you. Glad to be You're here. Welcome. You're welcome. Um, the next, we have Jason Swartzberg. He is also an electrifying entrepreneur. He has recently launched a finance division of his uh, organization, Maryland Energy Advisor, which is leveraging the commercial property assessed clean energy product. It has been, this is, he calls this his sports center highlight. You're a big sports guy, right? So as it leverages his acquisition and development finance, private real estate and energy experience. Uh, after cutting his teeth in finance and real estate, Jason identified the need for a diverse approachable energy company focused on unparalleled customer service and co-founded Maryland Energy Advisors in 2010 as a nights and weekend project. We're gonna talk about what a project uh, with two of his business partners and only $10,000. Um, it became a sustainable company by 2012 and now um, does work, perform work for many of the Mid-Atlantic's largest real estate companies. Uh, he's done HVAC projects, light retrofits, will film, um, and has done um, natural, um, gas work for over $100 million of annual energy spend. Uh, he is a graduate of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program and is currently enrolled in IEEE's um, Inner City Capital Connections, uh, ICSC's Executive Leadership Training Program. And he is, um, I have to mention this, you have a, a wonderful wife, two children, and an English cream golden retriever, Bo. Bo's not here today. Bo was here at the at the prep, but Bo, Bo is beautiful. Bo is a beautiful dog. Um, so let me, let's, let's start shining some light. I'm going to use a lot of energy jokes today, so bear with me. We're going to shine some light on your companies and on your pathway in entrepreneurship. So why don't we start with what inspired you? You're in two industries. We've never featured anyone before in the energy space. You are two unique entrepreneurs for us and really unique in the marketplace. What inspired you to become entrepreneur? I'll start with you, Crystal, and then go to Jason. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you so much for the question. Um, I got my start in the renewable energy space by also joining a local Maryland startup. Um, and at the time, 
Um, the Maryland State Legislature was just passing the Community Solar Pilot Program. And right then and there, I was able to see from the beginning foundation of how that program was working out. And there needed to be a lot of kinks, for instance, just the Community Solar in itself is a great model, but when it first rolled out, there were still a lot of barriers for access, the credit requirements, um, the long-term contracts. And so I thought, uh, obviously, launching under my own umbrella, I'll be able to bring my own ideas to the table that wouldn't stifle my creativity, as well as bridge some of the financing and developing and customer acquisition gaps that's embedded in the overall process of bringing those projects online with my grassroots organizing and political background, I thought that I'll be a great addition to the industry. No, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Jason, how about you? How did you get started in this electrifying business? Well, it, uh, it looks like Crystal's path was a, a lot straighter than mine. I know, uh, she went. Yeah, she, uh, she has it down. I was uh, a little bit more circuitous in my path. Um, for sure. So I guess in, in short, I was looking to start a company. Um, I come from a family of entrepreneurs. My grandfather was an entrepreneur. My father was an entrepreneur. And uh, I was 29 years old um, in 2010 and was really fulfilled on the personal side of things. I was married to my wife. We had our son, uh, but I just wasn't where I wanted to be professionally. Um, mm -hmm. So I was, I was looking at a couple of different I wouldn't say a couple, I was looking at a lot of different business models. Um, and it was more business model focused at the time than it was industry. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted something that was scalable. I wanted something that required limited inventory. Uh, and at the time I, I wanted to work from anywhere. I'm kind of tired of working from anywhere in the, over the past 12 months. <laughs> you didn't know what you were praying for. Yeah, for sure. But uh, in 2010, that sounded interesting. Um, and I looked at a bunch of different things from food trucks to t-shirt companies to a whole bunch of, of different options. And ultimately in February of 2010, I read an article in the sun that only 5% of the market uh, had taken advantage, the residential energy market had taken advantage of energy choice. Um, you can competitively buy your power just like you do your cable provider, your cell phone. And, you know, it hit kind of those three different check marks that, scalable limited inventory work from anywhere. Um, and I started writing the business plan in February of 2010. Um, I was so, uh, you mentioned the nights and weekends in the project, so I'll parking lot that, but ultimately by April of 2010, so a couple of months later, uh, we were licensed, bonded, insured by the Public Service Commission and in a position to, uh, to start an energy company. Wow, wow. So um, two very different paths of entrepreneurship for you too. Um, and which I think is helpful for those watching because you know, what all paths sometimes do lead to Rome. Um, all, you know, both of you are extremely successful. But let's let's give people a glimpse into sort of your journey, right? So what were the steps? You went from an idea to your business now. How did you, and we're gonna, this is the time when folks, you take out your pens, your pad, your paper, this is when we start taking notes and, um, and, um, and thinking about what, what were the steps you took to start your business? Um, why don't we start with Crystal? Yeah, so um, obviously I took a, a branch from um, an existing business model. So you have examples of um, a dating app called Tinder. Um, and some of those same founders went off and started um, the girls version of that. And I'm sure I'm trying to think of it, Bumble. And so that's similar to what I did in a sense that I was the second child or sister organization of Neighborhood Sun. And my focus was going into the inner cities, which I already started the framework and so the steps was just doing what I already did from a startup and just replicating that with my own team. So obviously you needed your marketing folks, you need your sales team, you need your business plan, um, what's your expenses. Um, and I already kind of understood those um, verticals because I already practiced it three years um, before I branched on my own. And what was the pivotal moment? And similar, um, I, I think, 
um, inspiration, like Jason, when I joined this industry, I wanted to work from home. So, you know, Virtual Shared Solar is, is an organization, We Solar is an industry that's already designed for the future. Um, majority of folks are able to work from home, um, especially we were already adaptable when COVID-19 hit because a lot of our relationships were already established and we can continue those relationships through digital marketing, mm -hmm. um, which is a skill that you would need um, if you want to do community solar. Heavy on marketing and folks who are already organizers because you have to tap into the industry, you have to tap into the churches, how else are you going to sell solar, right? Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about a new product, that's almost in a sense too good to be true. I've written blogs, I've, you can do any article search on We Solar. this is the number one issue, especially for the Baltimore City residents and bg and &E and just any customers that when you present a product that, you know, offer them savings, they don't have to pay, um, there's no long-term contracts or cancellation fees. In this case, activists and environmentalists did get it right. The state legislators did get this right. And so my mission is just to build a team around that to say, look, this is a product and savings that is available for you and your homes. Take advantage of it. And also do the research because this is a budding industry. There's 19 states across the country that's bringing solar pilot programs online. So they, there's opportunity for another We Solar in those jurisdictions. Um, as, we, as we speak right now, you have Chicago, you have Pennsylvania, you have Virginia that's coming online. So it's a whole new budding industry that typically, it essentially was not classes or courses that I could have taken um, in, at school. So for all the students, they're not teaching you these new industries that's coming online. So you have to hear about it from attending workshops and seminars and, and Facebook live events like this to apply those skills that you learn in school and adapt it. And if you are have business acumen and want to be an entrepreneur, you can use what you see as, as a foresight, like, oh, this is where the industry is going. I can use my John Hopkins and my personal business experience, if, even if I did come from an entrepreneurial family like Jason, you can bridge that and see the future and, you know, put yourself in history as well. Absolutely. Let me, let me point out a couple of things you talked about. We've had entrepreneurs on here, like I said, 30 weeks. You all, y'all go to the same school in the sense that y'all have some tried and true advice for folks. One, you talked about, you worked in the industry for three years. You got to know the industry. You understood the industry. You almost sort of apprenticed in the industry before you launched. Like you did your research. You had an understanding of what you were going to launch into. Second, third, you talked about your marketing team, your sales team, your business team, the di digital marketing, um, and just your real uh, reliance upon communications and your mastery of being able to use blogs, use um social media, use platforms and use community connections to really help people understand what you were um, we, what you were um, talking about. And so, you know, those are great advice for folks who are entering into emerging industries. What you just said were um, truly like you shed light like that, you know, that <laughs> um, on, on how they can, how they can take this forward. Jason, how about you? What would you say you went from an idea, you know, you had three principles you were going by. You wanted to be able to be anywhere. You didn't want the product to expire and you wanted to be able to start something that could grow. So tell us about how did you go from idea to bringing forth a business? Yeah, I think it was probably a series of calculated risks. Um, <clears throat> unlike Crystal, I, I wasn't from the industry. Um, so I, I had a, a real estate background. I had a finance background. I had an MBA. Um, but I, I didn't know anything about energy. Um, we had limited capital. Um, we had limited uh, knowledge of the business at the time, 10 years ago. Uh, we had limited relationships. Um, so I think, you know, that's a testament. A lot of people want to say, you know, where am I going to get my capital from? You know, how am I going to do this? How am I going to pull it together? Um, we did this as a nights and weekends project. I kept my full-time job for three years until it was sustainable. I didn't max out my credit cards. I didn't take out credit card debt. Um, I, I didn't, you know, mortgage my home. Um, 
that, that's one way to do it. Uh, I'm not suggesting that people aren't successful who do it that way, but uh, we, we call it uh, affectionately the bootstrap grind. Um, that's a, a, a common term between you know, me and my two business partners. But um, if you're willing to put in the work and willing to take a series of calculated risks mm -hmm. and willing to bet on yourself, you don't have to leverage the farm, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there is a world in which you can, it's kind of the Gary Vaynerchuk side hustle, right? Like you can keep your full-time job and meet those obligations and, you know, treat people kind of golden rule the way you would want to be treated. Don't, don't slip on that side of things, but yeah. you have 24 hours in a day and how are you going to use those hours? Um, mm -hmm. So we're kind of, you know, boot, a combination of school of hard knocks and bootstrap grind, um, you know, from 10 to 12, we, we learned a lot. And um, I could tell you a lot of things not to do because we, we've made, we've yeah, made a lot. <laughs> what would you say? You said, hold on. If you told me you had a bootstrap grind, you took these calculated, what were these risks? What were you, what were you doing? What were you, yeah. you going, how are you going from working full time doing this at night mm -hmm. to 2010, you flip the switch and you go full time. What's, what were, well, 2012, I guess. Yeah. How did you do that? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, so I think again, a, a series of calculated risks and having a, a, an MVP or minimal viable product. It, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you have to know what your value proposition is. You have to understand which segment of the marketplace you serve. Uh, you have to provide unparalleled customer service um, and you need to figure out what works. And, you know, that's a, a lot of trial and error. And, you know, ultimately through trial and error, you'll, you know, figure out what works and then you want to replicate that. So we learned the energy business through um, our first iteration in the energy space was a, a residential choice shopping platform. So okay. almost like uh, Expedia of energy. Um, mm -hmm. If we want to hop on a plane right now and go down to West Palm Beach, we hop onto Expedia and we put in our desired dates and it'll give us some options out there in the market. And we can, the, the first iteration was point click switch. The idea is um, it, it provided all of the options out there in the market in a clear and transparent manner on this, mm -hmm. shop, on this shopping platform. Mm -hmm. And people could point click switch their way to energy savings. Mm -hmm. um, so that model is still alive and well. Um, that's our kind of B2C model. But mm -hmm. what, what happened with that, again, is it gave us the opportunity to add value and provide solutions to customers and continue to learn about the energy space. Mm -hmm. And you can also try. You know, you don't need to take out a $100,000 marketing campaign. You can do some Facebook ads. You can do some search engine optimization. You know, any successful entrepreneur, it's a series of trial and error. You just yeah. have to have to make sure that those trials are, are again going back to our theme of calculated risk. There are things you can stomach and things yeah. that you're you know you're okay um, making that bet. So I could keep going. I want to pause there. No, no, no. <laughs> it's great. I mean, one, um, we we might have bootstrap grind. I might use that in another entrepreneurship bet. I'm certainly going to do that. You talk about the calculated risk. Really, you had the minimally viable product, right? You had that, you got core, so you didn't let perfection be the enemy of good. That's right. And prepare, and we're prepared to iterate. So you were prepared to have to pivot at many different points. Yeah, I think one, I think I'm way. sorry, one point I think is really like, just to show you the company, we, we built our first website. Like we didn't, I don't know how to code. Like, I don't know, I don't know how to code. I mean, we didn't go out and hire one of the agencies around town to build a website for us. And this was before Wix. I mean, now anybody can have a, a beautiful professional website for $9.99 a month or, you know, something on Wix. They, they didn't have that in 2000. Yep. Um, we, we built our own website. So I kind of, you know, where there's a will, there's a way uh, yep. where, you're, where you're willing to grind it out. You can do it. It might take a while, and it does. Um, but I, I just, I'm sorry. I just wanted to make that point. No, that. no, no. I think that was extremely helpful. And you know, it you know pivots into thinking about you know what risk are you willing to make? And I think you talked about you know risk. It's all risky. Yeah. Um, and you you have to calculate that risk. But I think you know your your points are well taken about um, you know the limitations of resources. If you can compensate that with 
you know, sheer willpower. Let me get to this question and let me also tell people, I'm going to, I can tell I'm going to, um, I'm going to make sure I refuel at many points during this, um, <laughs> during this time, but um, let me make sure this is a time for you all to refuel while I, while I tell people how they can ask questions. They can ask questions in the chat in Zoom, um, but we know many of you are watching on Facebook, feel free your um, questions in the chat on Facebook. We have a team looking at that. You can also text your questions. So if you're listening on the phone, riding in your car, you can text your questions to 22333 and type J-H-U-W-L in the message. And I'll get all of those questions and be sure to ask them of Crystal and Jason. Let me get to this question because I think it builds off of what you both just said. Both of you had full-time jobs before starting your companies. What motivated you to take the leap to start your own business? Crystal, you were fine. You're doing, you were doing fine. You had your, you had a job. Mm -hmm. Why did you take the leap? What motivated you to take the leap? Yeah, I think this is a nice um, combination of question one and two in the sense that I saw where I can make a difference in my industry. I saw that not all community solar projects were going past the you know, interconnection stages or somewhere in the finance stage or even in the customer acquisition when you really were went to market to um, bring the energy to um, the customers. Somewhere along that line, it, it just didn't pass for some reason. And I wanted to one, understand that, but two, I'm like, it has to be a community people-centered approach that would help eliminate some of those bottlenecks that was taking place. And I felt like, well, this is my ideas. This is how I would do it. So one, it's a pandemic because I did launch in the middle of the racial riots, the pandemic, the recession. And similar to Jason, I also bootstrapped. I emptied out my um, government 401k when I worked on the Hill. Um, I bet it on myself. I took a chance. And I, I knew that I knew the industry, so I did have that experience along with some of the contacts. But unlike, you know, other folks that may be new to an industry, I was not, you know, um, a legacy entrepreneur. I, I didn't take any business classes, um, but I did have the experience of starting with a startup already, which was really key. Um, because startups are very risky. 90% of them do not make it past the first year, but already being a part of the founding team of one and leveraging that information and being another branch um, off that tree, um, you, you know, that really empowered me, empowered me in this case <laughs> um, to take, <laughs> take the leap and also execute my vision um, very conservative in financing. I'm like, well, I'm not going to have any money and coming in um, until I generate revenues to go after the lowest hanging fruit. And so, you know, and most cash flow is also another reason why a lot of businesses don't work. So me being a part of the sales team in my previous role, I knew that, hey, these are one of my assets and strengths that I can keep money coming in, or at least yeah. to sustain myself um, while I use my savings. And then um, position my company to create a nice pipeline to then build um, a nice business plan to bring in capital around the year mark. So that's where I'm, I'm, I'm at at the moment. Y'all are getting shout outs already. We are going right. I can already tell. Which is, um, um, y'all are bringing the energy. People are, yes, better on yourself. They're loving y'all on uh, social and the like. So let me ask that to, to you, Jason. What you took a leap. Um, you were working at night. What made you, what motivated you to take the leap and to start your business? Yeah, I had the benefit of some time to think about that while, while you asked the question. Um, I think I can distill it down to one word, control. Um, I wanted to control my destiny. Um, I wanted to control my financial upside. I wanted to control my lifestyle. Um, I wanted control. Uh, I wanted to control the culture, um, you know, that, that we ultimately have built over time. Um, so I think succinctly stated, I think it's control. Um, another thing uh, that also resonated with me was uh, the opportunity to build generational wealth. Um, I think it's, it's foregone a lot in society, but you can't pass down a title. That's right. I can be the CEO of the biggest, baddest organization out there. I can't pass that down. No, you can't. Uh, my children can't get that. Um, so that inspired me. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me, um, let me, there's so many great questions coming in. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going with the questions that we're getting in from Facebook and the like. So both of you talked about the marketing part of your business. Um, but also you talked about your business. So people are, People are out there asking this question. Mm -hmm. What is your business? So you talk about like, how do you, how do people, because people come on here and watch, want to think about industry, want to get advice, but they also want to know how to support you. So what is it that you do on a day-to-day -day basis? How do consumers, whether they're customers or B2C, B2B, so if they're businesses, how do they align with you. So tell me about that, Crystal, with you. And then Jason, how do people work with you? What is it that you, what is their, what are they buying um, when they're coming to work with you? Oh, that's a, such an interesting question um, because we sold there is a B2B as well as a B2C. So the B2B, B2B business model is I would just do straight sales and marketing for the farm. So my client or customers would be just solar developers that do not want anything to do with their customer acquisition. They just build and develop and they would subcontract out the customer acquisition. So I would you know, call up developers, hey, here's the software, here's my marketing team. Let me put a package together for your one megawatt project and I will fill it up with my you know, digital marketing on my waiting list that I have or my networks in the ground within that utility. And so obviously B2C, is now I need customers to actually fill up the farms that I've now have contracts with or advertising for. Solar farms. Exactly, solar farms. Okay. And so a customer would visit- I'm just helping, I'm just helping the- helping Yes, the, just so for the all the, the customers that like, I wanna support, you know, Crystal's the first black woman with a community solar company. So yes, if you're a bg &E customer, you live in Baltimore, you would go on my website, you would fill out the form. I would send you a link stating, hey, these are the farms that I have available in your utility. If I don't have any, join the waiting list because I have about four megawatts pending um, within the bg &E utility grid and say, yes, I wanna sign up and receive savings once these solar farms are up and running because I know for a fact that we solar via Crystal is bringing these online in my own community. And so if you are paying market rate, um, you should not be paying market rate in 2021. You should join an organization or join a community solar farm or a company. So we can also couple that with discounts that's generating from the solar farm and it will be applied directly on your bill. I don't think anyone's ever seen this. I mean, maybe people have. I've never seen the solar. I think I've seen a solar farm. Okay. Maybe. I think I've seen a solar farm, but yeah, you have to change that. <laughs> yeah, no, I need to see a solar farm. Okay, so Jason, how are you? What what is it that you do? So someone's on here, they're saying, How can I support Jason? What what is his business? Corbin. Is that, what what is, how are you is this, doing that? Is this my Oprah question? No, there's not. Hey, don't tell him I'm giving an Oprah question. It's not your Oprah question. <laughs> no, no, I, I appreciate the question. Um I think we're we're mostly at this point in our our uh our business of B2B play. Um, and I think, you know, we reduce operating expenses for commercial real estate owners through energy. Um, so any large commercial, uh, any large real estate owners uh, that have a large energy spend, we can add value. Um, you know, we broker electricity and natural gas, which is where we got our start. Uh, but we do energy efficiency and we do some solar projects as well. Uh, we've done some on-site solar projects and some off-site solar projects. Um, we're going to be building one in Baltimore City that'll be operational in December. Um, so we'll want to make sure that you come down and uh, we can see a solar, solar farm. Yeah, yeah. So there'll be, a, this is interesting, it's a rooftop solar application. So uh, large industrial rooftop, um, you know, that we're taking advantage of that, uh, the real estate up there to, to add value to a client. But uh, succinctly stated, we reduce operating expenses through energy. Um, for commercial real estate owners and do that through a, a multidisciplinary approach. Um, Jason, you might be responsible for someone quitting their job. Someone just said on um, texted in, I want to quit my job. I can't pass down a title. Jason, my life. Uh, that's, that's, that's lives on here. Okay. That is, um, that's electrifying, truly electrifying. 
But so let, let me ask you this. What has been your greatest accomplishment? Both of you have accomplished a great deal in your careers and in your companies. Crystal, tell me, like, what's your, what are you most proud of, of, of your work? Yeah, I, yeah, I think um, I'm still seven months in as far as we solar. Um, but one of my goals was to really control the narrative or the messaging within the community solar space and bring that to national and commercial recognition. And I think I'm on track to hit those goals and be one of the known pioneers and companies in the community solar space where community solar is also now synonymous with rooftop solar. So like you said, you didn't necessarily, you know about it, we're speaking, you know that you can now re have solar without putting panels on your roof. You can just join a farm and get solar credits. Um, but you have the, the privilege of being in these entrepreneurial circles. But for those, it's not really common knowledge. And I think just with my marketing and my branding and my secret sauce, um, that I'm on my way to you know, creating that national presence around this space. Um, and so just anyone coming in after that, their work wouldn't be as daunting because I've already created um, a lot of the pathway for them. Oh, that's so sweet. I mean, to, to, to pass down to others the information that they need to be um, great business owners. I mean, that's a huge accomplishment. That's the multi what I call the multiplier effect. Yeah. Uh, it's like connectivity. Yeah, exactly. The The entire industry will benefit from that um, only because it's it's not known. And so being featured in like Vogue and like places that aren't traditional energy sectors or, you know, it's like, this is cool. What is that community solar? I never knew that exists. Um, so yeah. that was one of my, my missions. And I think I'm on my way of accomplishing that. No, huge. I mean, just so impressive. So impressive. Jason, Jason, what's your greatest accomplishment thus far? You know, you have many more mountains to climb, but what? Yeah, yeah we're, we're just getting started. Um, and y'all just getting started, getting closer yeah. to the sun. Getting yeah. closer to the sun. <laughs> no doubt. Um, I mean, 10 years in, um, you know, we just celebrated our 10 year anniversary this year. So it's huge. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Thank you. So that's a great accomplishment. And I think job creation. Um, yeah, you know, we've been fortunate. It was me, uh, my business partner, Phil Krosky and Paul Clary. We, we joked that the Phil beginning. Phil Krosky, that is, <laughs> that's my guy. That's a good, that's a real good man. Yeah, that's my guy too. We, uh, yeah, we've that's been, a good man. We've been in some stuff, uh, me, Phil and Paul. So, uh, we're all, uh, we're all card carrying members of Bootstrap Grind, but, um, <laughs> I think, I think job creation, I mean, it was three men in a truck you know, in 2010 to 2012. And now it's, you know, 2025 20, plus wow. you know, men, women, you know, all ethnicities, all backgrounds. Um, Huge. So that's been, it's been a lot of fun. Um, it's and, beautiful, yeah, beautiful. Core, core to our DNA for sure. No, this, I mean, it's so, I mean, you know, we always, uh, entrepreneurship matters. We don't ask that as a question. We say it as a statement, more as um, an affirmation, but job creation is huge when we talk about what business is and so and both of you are uh, just grateful to have you here let me ask this it's going to be my Oprah question because I'm going to have to get to all the questions people are giving in the chat but also I'm, I'm, it's my Oprah chat question but I'm also I now I now coin it my Melody Hobson question because she's, <laughs> she's doing some I mean they've been doing some dope things but it's just getting better it's getting better and better but what those are two women that um, sit at tables of influence and power. Um, they they are able to um, impact our landscape in really significant ways. I know they're watching. Both of them are watching. They watch every week, uh, and they want to know what things should they be doing to support businesses like yours. Um, to grow and to thrive in cities across this country. So what advice would you give? This is, a, this is a rare opportunity to talk to, give them advice, but what what advice would you give them? Crystal, what would you say to them? Yeah, I would say um, keep up with our social media. We're a next generation community solar company. And so we love to engage the community and join our newsletter. 
Um, because, you know, and Jason can also talk to this, you know, solar projects take a while. And so mm -hmm. if you're just starting up, operational cost is an issue um, yeah. for, and, and also a barrier for, you know, folks who don't have um, legacy wealth. Um, and so during that time, you need to figure out, are you going to offer consulting? Are you going to offer um, just do subcontracting to bridge the gap if you're developing and owning projects? Um, because that that's 12 to 15 months. Um, and so if a customer is in the queue or community organizer um, want to support, I would just say stay engaged, look out for sites that could potentially be potential community solar sites, um, host webinars in your own community or invite me or some of my teammates to say, listen, we want to bring community solar to our neighborhood, come out to our church and do a presentation. And so I'm always interested in, in any opportunity, small groups, medium groups, large groups to talk more about community solar and how we can bring those benefits um, to, to anyone who's willing to listen. I mean, it's great. I mean, to be able to, um, you're asking for the access to the network, which is smart. It's very smart to, to do that when you have particularly con extremely connected individuals. Jason, what, what are you, what are you, what's your, um, remember it's Oprah and Melody, so you sure. can do whatever you want. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Um, the one thing that everybody on this phone call and has in common uh, is we use energy. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter, you know, what you're doing right now, what your job title is, what your bank account looks like. You you use power, right? Um, so why not get those power needs from smaller organizations like you know Maryland Energy Advisors or We Solar? Um, mm -hmm. You know, we can we are here in your backyard, ready, willing, and able to do projects. Um, how about you know we support each other? Um, and not buy it from a company located in Texas or a co company mm -hmm. located in California. Um, mm -hmm. We're here. Um, and we're all the consistent thing between all of us is we use energy. No, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, talking about, I think the recent things that have been going on have taught us how much um, it is important to have, you know, a diversification of energy sources. Um, you know, we see what happened in, in Texas. Let me get to some more of the questions that have been asked. Did your um, businesses shift during COVID? Have you had the COVID effect? I know, Crystal, you started during COVID. So right. um, you probably haven't had to pivot as much. You you already pivoted for the COVID. Exactly. But uh, Jason, how about you? Did you pivot for COVID? Um, you're pivoting every day. Um, you That's know, right. When you, yeah, when you're on your own business. Um, so we're... I always joke that I've gotten really good at walking in the dark because um, mm. I've been doing it for 11, 10, 11 years at this point. So you, you just keep on walking. Some days you don't, you, you don't have your glasses and you're walking in the dark. Some days you're, you're fortunate enough to have the glasses and you can see a bit. Um, we're, we're really lucky in, in being in the energy business. Um, there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that had very viable, successful businesses and they were in hospitality uh, or they were in a, a segment of the marketplace that did unfortunately get hit pretty hard. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone's using energy. Um, fortunately, they're paying, you know, paying their power bills. Um, so we're doing business differently. Um, we're not with our team. It's, it's just me in, in the office today. It's a little lonely, um, you know, just trying to keep the team at home and keep them safe. Um, yeah. Business development is, looks different um, in this environment. Um, but we were, we were fortunate. Um, we really yeah. were that we weren't overly impacted by COVID. Yeah. And then, um, this blends into the next question and, and folks are asking for you to reflect in this one um, and shed light on, um, like how I did that. That was actually very, <laughs> no, I did that. Shed light on um, advice you would give to your former self. So knowing all that you know now, what advice would you give yourself about starting your business? You know, hindsight's 2020. Sure. Sometimes, literally, it's 2020 for us. But, uh, Crystal, what, what advice would you give to yourself about starting your business? Um, I would say forgive myself, um, be mm -hmm. kind to myself, 
Mm. Um, get more sleep. <laughs> um, those first few weeks, I mean, I had to rush in my family members from New York to take the calls um, because I, I had the pleasure of being featured in Black Enterprise. And it was rough because I remember, one, that was a blow up. Yes, I, it was over 100,000 people on um, the actual site because you could see the views and then on, you know, social media, I had calls back to back. And I felt like if I didn't respond to every email and every call that in some cases I was failing. Um, and at the time I was also um, doing sales. I was contracting um, and we had goals, very difficult goals um, or we would lose the, the customer acquisition. And, um, they were up against a very tight deadline. And so at that very first two, three weeks, um, this huge press hit um, along with the demand of the business and inquiring customers and opportunities at the same time, mm -hmm. um, I was very, very rough on myself. Um, but if I was to reflect, there was nothing, there's only a certain amount of hours in a day. It's, it's only okay. so much I can do. Um, so yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. It's it's a very profound, um, very simple but very profound statement that you made, right? To about kindness and things towards yourself. Jason, how about you? What would you, knowing what you know now, what would you say to your former self? Yeah, it's it's kind of Monday morning quarterback, right? It's a pretty envious position. That the question you're asking, um, mm -hmm. I think trust the process. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and 10 years later, we're, we're alive and well and growing. And it's easy to say it now. Um, you know, it's not 2010 any longer, but I think trust the process. Um, I think that would be my advice to myself. Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of the questions we're getting, a lot of the things we're, I'm seeing in the chat, people have plugged in to, um, <laughs> to get, to get some, uh, some energy from you two and to uh, get a little bit of light. One of the questions we just received was, how do you overcome your bad days when you lose confidence? So, you know, every day, it's, sun doesn't shine every day. Mm -hmm. um, um, can't remember what, what prolific poet said that. It was, um, I think it was Method Man, but um, <laughs> you, um, <laughs> um, uh, some, something along those lines. How do you overcome those bad days when you lose confidence? Uh, can, you, can you just shed some light on that? Crystal? Yeah. Um, I, I think for me, I've always been really strategic and um, being low key. That's just, I'm, I have an outgoing personality, but I'm just, I'm not in the mix. And with that, I have a very tight niche of like family and friends. And so mm -hmm. I definitely lean on my advisors. Um, I will turn off my phone, get off of social media, um, take that break, that mental break and unplug. Um, so I could just regather myself um, and reflect and just like, okay, today was bad. Um, journal, um, go work out um, and just bet on myself. Like, you know what, this is the, you know, what I believe I should do. And, you know, it's not the the situation that right now I'm dealing with isn't ideal, but I regroup, recharge, get some advice. I, I as a CEO, will make the indecision, um, take a well-needed break. I don't want to make any impulsive decisions um, and give myself time. And then the next day, I will execute on that and feel more confident that, you know what, I'm going about this situation clearly. I've taken the advice from my trusted advisors, friends and family. I'm well rested and set the vision as far as how we would matriculate forward. Very good advice. The recharging, so critical. Um, I'm glad you keep, you know, you, you've been talking about that, that, taking care of self as you, as, as, for, as entrepreneurs. How about you, Jason? What, how do you overcome the bad days? How do you, you know, stay motivated, stay encouraged? Yeah. It's, um, I think perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, what, you know, everybody has bad days. To what extent is, is your day bad? Um, yeah. I also think, you know, similar to Crystal, surrounding yourself with fellow entrepreneurs. 
Mm -hmm. um, you're, you're all going through the, the stuff. Um, everybody out there is doing it for the gram. Um, yeah. That's not life. Doing it for the gram. Yeah. They're, do, they're doing it for the gram. Um, right. And everyone's an overnight success. And you it, know, it's not true. It's no. Not true. no. <laughs> um, so true. I think having that perspective and uh, if you're fortunate enough to have, you know, folks who are starting at similar times as you, um, <laughs> I, uh, I've been hiking every Friday with a fellow entrepreneur. Um, so we try to one up each other. You want, you want to know what happened to us this week, you know, with, with you know, such and such. Um, so I think that perspective, again, perspective in the micro and then perspective in the macro, like how bad is this? You know, it's, it stinks, but yeah. Um, how, how bad is this in the grand scheme of things? You, you know, I, you know, my, my dad used to say this to me, he said, you know, don't give a whole day over to bad. Mm. Had a whole, a bad hour, mm -hmm. moment, bad couple minutes, bad mm -hmm. hour, but we not claiming badness for the whole day. I like that. And, um, I don't know. I just always think of that. Like, I'm not claiming badness for the whole day. I don't have that day. Mm -hmm. I have bad moments, bad hours. Sometimes they even come half days, but I'm not going to give a whole day mm -hmm. to badness. So I, I, I am completely agree with you. You, you also mean, don't have the luxury. You don't have you the luxury. luxury. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you can't, can't get that whole day away. I, time is something I get back. So you are absolutely right. Folks are asking this question. Is the solar energy industry taking time to grow? Um, or is it sort of like what growth pace is, is, the, is the industry at at this point? What would you say? Jason, I'll start with you and then Crystal. Yeah, I think we're tip off in the first quarter. Um, I mean, I think, you know, there's a couple of, there's a bunch of things that'll help accelerate the industry. Uh, but I think as the value prop, look, it's very important to be sustainable. Um, it's very important to have uh, resiliency, as, as you mentioned, in areas like Texas and otherwise. Um, so those are crucial. Uh, but I also think, you know, as the value proposition continues to strengthen, uh, you'll have higher user adoption. As, you know, the, the costs come down for the panels and the costs come down for the installation, um, solar does make sense. Um, it doesn't make sense for every single application at this point. Um, so I think as you know, costs continue to come down, uh, it will move into the mass uh, in a state like Maryland. But I would say um, in other states with time of use, tariffs, uh, higher cost of, of energy uh, relative to solar, uh, you've seen greater user adoption because not just the sustainability play and the resiliency play, but the value proposition is, is really, really strong. But I think we're, I think we're well on our way. Yeah. Um, what about you? What would you say, Crystal, to that question? Yes, I also kind of wanted to take it back to um, the statement your dad said. I had a girlfriend that oh, yeah. said, yeah, she had a statement was just like, make those bad days or your sad times or anger expensive. You know, so if someone's bothering you or something, just make that really expensive. And he was like, that person can't afford that. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to take, you know, take that from you. You can't afford to take my whole day. It's too expensive. It's too expensive. It's a luxury it's item. <laughs> I love it. I'm stealing it. I'm, I'll give credit to your friend. I'll give credit to you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'll make um, the execution. I mean, I would say community solar, you know, solar in this, in general is fairly, you know, it's an infancy. I mean, we're like a zygote then, right? Like an embryo. Um, we're, we're just like starting out, but I would say it is the fastest growing sector within um, solar. Um, and Bloomberg um, just put a piece out on it, um, on community solar where I was mentioned and it talked about how fast the industry is gearing up, um, particularly in the shared solar model um, and the other jurisdictions around the country that, you know, folks advocates are still trying to plug in and figure out the policy side. Um, so yeah, it's, I mean, it's not even active in all states. Um, so we still have so much work to do. And even in the states that it's implemented, like Maryland, we're still working with like billing integration. Like when we compare Maryland's community solar pilot program to New York and Massachusetts, 
they already have like similar to like third party par- um, suppliers like Jason, like they already have billing integration for community mm-hmm. solar. That's just a nuance where folks are like, I want to sign up for your farm, but now I have two bills. And so that's how you know, like how early and how baby and green we are, where we're still kinks like that. We have to go petition the public service committee. Can we get billing integration? Like that's, we're still that new um, and young. And, and it's just going to take a few more years to really even get the policy and integration and the flow of things. But in the meantime, look at all the opportunities that create and emerging markets for all the young people because all these things still need to get figured out um, yeah. and dealt with. So whenever there's sensu chaos, there's opportunity. So, you know, there's opportunities to be a part of the solutions that we're, as we grow and continue to, to scale. Yeah. Then um, there's a, a few folks who are um, commenting it and have a similar experience to yours, Jason, in the sense, and just on pivot for a second, and they are wanting to start a business in an industry where they have minimal experience. What advice would you give to them? They're entering that marketplace. Yeah, um, I think find an underserved need in that particular segment of the market that you're looking in. Um, you know, how can you fill a need that's out there in the space? Uh, I do. I'm a firm believer in this calculated risk model. Like, don't don't push them in and bet on black, right? Like, yeah. That's dangerous. Um, I think. I think. Talk about poker. Poker. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. Yeah, That's right. So um, I also think Crystal. Crystal had an interesting point too. Is, I mean, we're we're planning for the long term here. I mean, can Mm -hmm. we go apprentice under somebody? Um, You know, can we can we get some mentorship? Can we get a a job in a field um, that we are interested in exploring? Um, Mm -hmm. so I think, I think to succinctly answer your question, I think to counteract, um, maybe some of your, your lack of knowledge in that space, I would strongly recommend that you have something else that you're best in class in, right? So you might not know anything about community solar, um, but maybe you're a phenomenal marketer. So Mm -hmm. if you can do customer acquisition, you can cover up some of the lack of knowledge that you have in the solar until you get your legs under you. But Mm -hmm. I think think finding a a niche in the market, finding an underserved opportunity, but really making sure that you're leveraging your stronger qualities, um, you know, to help fuel that that business. Um, If you're not sure that you have uh, a leg up or you're best in class in marketing or finance or something else, I would, I would strongly uh, recommend, you know, trying to find a, an apprentice opportunity or getting a job in that field uh, to get some formal training before taking the leap. Yeah, exactly. Do you have it? You agree. Let me, uh, so that person is very active because they are asking a follow-up question to that question, which is how do you advise someone who wants to start a business, but does not know where to start? Like, where did you go? Did you go to the small business resource center? Did you utilize and how did you, how, what would, where would you tell these folks to go? They want to start a business. Small network, not a legacy entrepreneur. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I think it's the same, um, you know, ending statement that Jason mentioned, you know, find, find a company that you are mirroring, even if you don't have experience. And sometimes it's the grunt work, right? And every company There's opportunities that folks just don't simply like doing, but there's a lot of learning curve and experience there. So get an internship, call them up, be an assistant, do all the the micro things that you might feel like, I don't know, but you're going to learn so much. And joining a startup, yeah, I was government and community affairs, but I did a lot of admin, I did HR, I did data entry, very entry level stuff. And, And obviously as a As an owner, I'm doing all those things as well. And so if you get in on the ground floor and learn, then you actually can also figure out if this is something I even want to do. Sometimes people think, you know, oh, this is something I I, I want to do, but how do you really want to do it if you don't really understand what it is? And so I think getting into the industry, getting an internship or a fellowship or apprenticeship, um, whether that's an installer um, or a financial analyst or a modeler, um, whether it's admin, 
Um, and also you don't, for solar specifically, we need everyone. Like it doesn't really matter your background. I didn't have an a industrial electrical engineering background, nor did I have a business background. I had a political science community background. So that lets you know right political there. Science is a great degree. Yeah. <laughs> And so, you know, with that, it, it lets you know that, you know, you leverage what you do have, you work your connections um, and just always be curious. And with that curiosity, you will seek to fill in the gaps that you don't have. Absolutely, absolutely. Any advice, Jason, for you? What would you say? Yeah, I mean, I think um, it, it's a good question. Um, I think it's a tough question. Um, I think, you know, kind of a series of, of questions you need to ask yourself. Um, what do you want to do? Who do you want to do it for? Um, how do you want to do it? Um, like I think starting to build out and, and look, I'm not a believer in hundred page business plans, right? Uh, Cause you're the next day, you're probably going to change everything anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think, you know, some of these kind of high level questions and I'm a big decision tree person, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, start, start asking some of these questions and it'll walk you down the, the critical path. But, you know, what do you want to do? Who do you want to do it for? How are you going to do it? You know, get kind of get the, the model solidified and then start, you know, testing the model, um, you know, maybe not externally, but internally, is it, is, you know, what are my costs of goods sold? Is it profitable? Um, is this, you know, is there a, a market, you know, for, for this particular product? And I also think Crystal made a, a really good point. Um, you know, who, who else is doing it? Like, are we trying to invent the next iPhone or are we trying to sell insurance in a different way than it's being sold currently? Um, there's a lot of lessons learned that can uh, be learned from the legacy companies and how can we uh, optimize that, that offering or change that offering so it's better received in the market? Yep, absolutely. Let me make sure I get to this question. This has come up a couple of times. How can people get in contact with you? Um, how can they learn more about the industry? So Jason, how, how can people get in contact with you? What's your dot coms and your, and your ads? Sure, uh, mdenergyadvisors.com. Um, and that'll, that'll link you to LinkedIn and, and our phone number and all that, um, our handles, our ads. Uh, so mdenergyadvisors.com is, is the best way to, to grab us. Yep. And you know, Instagram, Facebook, if you saw that, we have all those at MD Energy Advisors. Crystal, how can we people get in contact with you, other than just Googling you and realizing you were in uh, Black Enterprise and, 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 and Open Magazine? How can I get in contact with you? <laughs> Um, I would just say um, we solar dot energy, very simple. And yes, it is a dot energy. I want I want to make that a thing, right? So if y'all are interested in um, doing an energy company, put your URLs as a dot energy because people are like, well, I've never seen that before. Um, and if you're on the call, go and like us, thumbs us up on Facebook, join now, go to we solar, we on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram as we solar underscore energy. Um, I have a very active social media um, manager and fellow, so they engage with um, anyone who's, you know, very curious or have any um, follow-up questions from this segment, um, and you have direct access to me as well, so. Excellent, excellent. Let me just say, this has been an electrifying, <laughs> completely energizing uh, opportunity where you have shed light and brought the fire and recharged us. Um, for this past hour, I'm eternally grateful to both of you um, uh, and just wish you both the best and anything we can do to support you, both of you, um, we will do. So um, let me make sure I give the announcements before we end. Uh, we will be returning on March 4th. So next week, it's funny, we're in March already. Um, at one o'clock with two amazing plant shops. This is, this is good. This is all about those with the green thumb. We have Liz Fada with B Willow. That's a big following. So I know the B Willow people are coming out. Uh, and Agnes Trainer with Indigo Plants, another big following. Um, you do not want to miss us um, with that conversation. Follow us on JH Connects on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, uh, some other stuff else. Instagram. Um, email us feedback, jhconnects at jhu.edu if you have other. Um, you have other entrepreneurs you'd like to see us feature, 
please, um, we want to thank our community partners, Johns Hopkins University, Johns Hopkins Health System, Hopkins Local, Mayor's Office of Small Minority Women-Owned Business, um, the Warnock Foundation. Thank you all and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.